The first bill on the calendar for the day is House File 2988. The clerk will report the bill. House File number 2988, number one on the calendar for the day, an act relating to workers' compensation, the first engrossment. I recognize the member from Sherburne, Representative Wolgamod, to explain the bill. Well, thank you very much, Madam Speakers. I rise to urge for your support of House File 2988, which is the bill that contains the 2023 recommendations for the Workers' Compensation Advisory Council. Now, Madam Speaker, for some of our newer members here in the House and for members of the public, before I get into the gist of what's in the bill, I would like the opportunity to explain what the Workers' Compensation Advisory Council is. The Workers' Comp Advisory Council, or the WCAC, is a unique creation that exists to review and recommend changes to our state's workers' compensation laws. The WCAC is made up of legislators. I am a liaison for the House, and I'd also like to give a special shout out to my friend and fellow House liaison, uh, the member from Wright, Representative McDonald, uh, as well as members of the business community and from the representatives from the labor community and it is administered by the Department of Labor and Industry. So special shout out to our commissioner, Nicole Blissenbach. And Madam Speaker, I want to make clear that the WCAC, the beauty of it, is that its recommendations are on a consensus basis. So everything that is in this bill has been approved by myself, it's been approved by my uh, fellow liaison and co-author, Representative McDonald, and has been approved by uh, members of the business and labor committees as well as the Commissioner of Labor and Industry. So that's a little context about the WCAC. Now that we've established that, Madam Speaker, I'd like to get into what's in the bill. Here we go. This bill increases compensation for workers who experience a permanent partial disability. It calls on the Department of Labor and Industry to conduct a study to identify changes to improve the experience and outcomes for workers with work-related PTSD. And Madam Speaker, this bill appropriates $500,000, not from the general fund, but from the workers' compensation um, fund for the study. It also reduces the payments by insurers and employers to hospitals for outpatient services for injured workers. It clarifies when attorneys are available following a dispute on a claim. It establishes when an injured worker is provided with an item that is custom made for them. That is the property of the injured worker. It creates a schedule for fees medical records that healthcare providers can charge, and it authorizes the Department of Commerce to call the security deposit of private self-insured employers that file or declare bankruptcy and fail to pay required workers' compensation benefits. Again, Madam Speaker, I would urge your support and the support of the members of the chamber for this uh, great legislation that is the full consensus of members from the business and labor community, as well as uh, members from the Republican and Democratic caucuses from the House and Senate. That's what the bill does. That's why we're bringing it forward. With that, Madam Speaker, I would be happy to stand for any questions related to House File 2988. There are no further amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill a third reading. Third reading, House File number 2988. Third reading. Any further discussion? I recognize the, uh, Representative McDonnell. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, well, I rise in support of the bill as well. Representative Wolgamott uh, stated it uh, uh, very accurately. This is a very good bill. Uh, members, uh, this is what happens when good government comes together with industry and labor and hashes it all out off the House floor in committee over months and comes to a unanimous agreement that this is the right thing to do for the Workmen's Comp Advisory Committee. So I think all of us uh, members could probably learn from them, wouldn't you say, Representative Wolgamott? So, and also, since my son is a page here, I thought his old man should get up and at least say a few words on the, uh, on the bill, since uh, I have an opportunity to speak on the lead as a lead. But uh, anyway, a great bill. Uh, again, the Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Labor, uh, Commissioner Blissenbach, they all worked very hard. No offense, Representative Wolgamont, you and I didn't really do much of anything uh, other than just uh, nod and say, you're right, you're doing a good thing, keep up the good work. And now we get to vote in favor of this great piece of legislation. So thank you, Representative Wolgamont and the Advisory Committee. And Madam Speaker, that is all for now. Uh, I urge members to vote green. Further discussion? Representative Wagamont. Well, Madam Speaker, before you, before you instruct the Chief Clerk to take the role on this great bill, I would just like to take a moment to thank all the members of the Workers' Compensation Advisory Council who 
like Representative McDonald said, have put in hours and hours of work to put forward this great legislative product. I would like to thank Bill Schwind, Matthew Schmidt, uh, President of the Minnesota Chamber, Doug Loon, David Heinrich, Gary Thaden, Margaret Hobbs, Robert Ryan, Burt Johnson, Ed Reynoso, Colin Beery, John Thorson, Bernie Burnham, as well as, again, Representative McDonald, and then our uh, Senate counterparts, uh, Senator Paul Utke, Senator Jennifer McEwen, and the best for last, Madam Chair, would really like to thank Commissioner Nicole Blissenbach for all of her hard work and leadership in leading the Workers' Compensation Advisory Council this year. Members, as Representative McDonald said, this is what consensus work looks like. I'm so proud and honored to be a part of the Workers' Compensation Advisory Council. Let's, have the, let's listen to our business community, let's have the backs of our workers, and let's pass this bill with a green vote. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll. The clerk will close the roll. There be 131 ayes and zero nays. The bill is passed and its title agreed to.